This is a number one Mark III. And this is also a number one Mark III. Lee Enfield, also known as an SMLE. But why is this one butchered? Hold on there a minute, I need to pause it right there for a second. Now, before I blabber on too much, I must tell you a little bit about the number one Mark III SMLE. The SMLE was first introduced in 1907, SMLE stands for Short Magazine Lee Enfield. The rifle is chambered in 303 British. The magazine holds 10 rounds. In late 1915, the number one Mark III star was introduced. The rifle weighs 3.9 kg or thereabouts, and the rifle is 44.57 inches in length. And now back to the main video. Keen-eyed viewers may be able to tell that this one here is missing a few bits and bobs, namely the nose cap, top wood here and the bottom wood right here along with the external barrel band but why is that non-firearms enthusiasts may not know why some military surplus rifles have had bits and bobs cut off they call these type of rifles sporters after world war one and two there was an abundance of military rifles around after World War I, there was namely number one Mark III Lee Enfields in Commonwealth countries. Hunters and farmers brought these from the military and the government and converted them into sporting rifles like this. Why the hell would they do that? Why would they butcher a beautiful rifle such as this? Well, there's one main reason, and that is weight. See, the full wood version of the number one Mark III SMLE weighs nearly 4kg while stripping the forward or the top wood and the bottom wood and the nose cap off removes nearly a kg of weight. One thing that's interesting about these two rifles is they still have this tiny piece of tin right here or sheet metal. What this is for is to block off the remaining rounds in the magazine so you have one in the chamber and you cannot reload now why would they put this on the rifle because of volley fire how well this worked i don't know but by the time world war one came around and trench warfare came around this tactic was useless so this piece of tin was a waste of material and not needed and the reason why i say it's surprising that this rifle still has it is the same reason why the front of the rifle doesn't have any of the forward and the nose cap it's because of weight. Most hunters and farmers got rid of these on rifles made prior to 1915 to save weight. Now you may be wondering why the hell do I have a old Sporter Leanfield rifle? Now this is a practical use for me. This is my brush gun. And the reason why I haven't put a scope on it is because I find it is easier to get a good sight picture on the target and your quicker sight picture than if I have a scope. Not to mention the amount it actually costs to mount a Picatinny rail here so you can put it on a scope. So far, this particular rifle has exceeded my expectations for accuracy. For some, that may be a surprise because it does not have the external barrel band and the nose cap, for example. However, a lot of sporters kept their accuracy if they still had the inner barrel band. This kept the barrel bedded nice and snugly so that the barrel wouldn't move etc. However a lot of sporters even if they still have the inner barrel band do have one issue. Once the barrel has heated up the bullets tend to not always hit their target. So after firing a few rounds in quick succession it's best to Put it down and let it cool down. Now both of these rifles have a 10 round detachable magazine. Majority of the time, you would actually not swap your magazine, you will feed it by a stripper clip through here. Unlike my Sporter, this particular one here has the wind adjustments. So get the bolt out, you flick that up. Your safety is pretty basic. Once you actually have your bolt in, pull your safety down, it disengages the trigger and you can't open the bolt. To this day, it is also believed that this is one of the fastest bolt acts. Even though a simplistic design, these two rifles are over 100 years old, they still stand up to the test of time. 
They're still accurate, they're still a workhorses and they still do their job. They both look beautiful, they both have good backstories. And to me, they are both very special. Thank you all for watching. I am Ben, this is Ben Doing Things. Please like and subscribe, leave a comment if you wish, and I'll see you in the next video.